Okay, Assalamualaikum and hello. So, welcome back uh, to the class. So, this week is the last topic. Okay, you will cover the last topic which is induction motto. You have two uh, sources. The first one is the lecture note and another one, this one, okay, is the, uh, the, the book. Okay, so if you want to look at the book, so you can use the book. Okay, or if you want to use a lecture note, you can use lecture note. Okay. So let's start with chapter. Okay, we continue. Actually, this is chapter 4. Okay, so chapter 4, part 2, induction, motto. Okay, or induction machine. So, introduction. Okay. The induction machine is the most rugged and the most widely used machine in industry. Okay. So, induction machine. Okay. AC machine, you have two types. Okay. If you recall back the notes, previous note. Okay. AC, uh, AC machine, you can either have a synchronized machine. Okay. Or induction machine. Okay. The advantage of using induction machine is that it is rugged. Okay very hard to damage okay so that's why industry like to use the induction machine okay and for induction machine both stator and rotor carrying alternating current okay okay so you have a okay you have a stator here for example this is a stator this is a stator again Okay, and then this is a rotor. Okay, so inside here you have winding, 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 winding. Okay, here winding, winding, and both it has alternating current. Okay, alternating current. Okay, that is the different. Okay, for induction machine it is alternating current. For synchronous machine, if usually in rotor they have AC, uh, they have DC. That is for synchronous motor. Okay, for this case we don't uh, we don't focus on the for this course we don't focus on the synchronous motor. Okay. So for the uh, okay, so the alternating current is applied to the stator. So you have a source here. Okay, let me clear this up first. Okay, so you have a source here. Okay, the source supply to the stator. Okay, you supply the AC power to the stator and then it will induce. Okay, remember you have a AC here and remember magnetic circuit. If you have something like a circuit, you apply here. Okay, AC. Okay, you get another AC at the second part. So basically what happened is it will induce in this secondary. So you have a induce AC current here. Okay. So that's why it's called AC machine, uh, induction machine. Okay. So the application for single phase, you know, this is a washing machine, ceiling fan, refrigerator, blender, juicer, basically many things. Okay. Two phase induction machine, usually a uh, servo motor. Okay. This is rarely used. And for three phase, this is uh, mostly used, okay, for pumps, fans, compressor, paper mills, textile mill, okay. So this is a uh, induction machine generally, okay. So induction machine is used as a most common motor in the different application, okay. Mostly popular in the factory, okay. It has stator and rotor, okay. So for this case, okay, make sure the rotor here, okay, this rotor. Okay. It has two types, either wound winding or square cage. Okay. Make sure you know in the induction motion, the popular uh, types of rotor are square cage and wound rotor. Okay. Both three phase and single phase motor are widely used. Okay. Majority of the uh, motor are square cage. Okay. Okay. If not mistaken, square cage is popular because it is low in cost and very rugged. 
and a typical motor consists of two parts an outside stationary setter having a coil supply AC to produce a rotating magnetic field and inside rotor attached is the shaft and the top uh, by the rotating field so basically if you apply AC here okay okay maybe after this I will show you in detail okay so what happened is that you have AC right so you have AC supply so the magnetic field actually rotating so maybe the magnetic field uh, this is B magnetic field at certain time it will move something like this B B B okay at a different time it will move so basically magnetic field rotate okay when the magnetic field rotate it will induce the current in the rotor okay so magnetic field at the stator rotate and induce the current in the stator that is the general principle of the induction machine okay so basic principle and AC current is applied okay to the stator like I said before you apply current at the stator okay which generate a flux in the stator magnetic circuit Okay, it will create flux, okay, magnetic flux. Okay, the flux induce an EMF in the bar of the rotor. So you have rotor here. Uh, I think this one is a squirrel cage. Basically, it's just a conducting bar. Okay, just a conduction bar. Okay, uh, I think this one is much more easy to see. The squirrel cage is basically like this, something like this. So you just have a conductor here, a metal. Okay some sort of metal conductor okay and then it is short circuit at the bottom so basically it's become something like this okay so this is called the school cage roto okay okay so this flag induce an NF in the conducting bar of the roto as they cut the flag why the magnetic bar a magnetic is being moved so remember, uh, you have a uh, BLB, okay. So you have a magnetic flux. Remember the at uh, the stator, okay, static part, okay. You have a rotating magnetic flux, okay. When you have a rotating magnetic flux flowing through the conductor, you will create a magnetomotive force. E is equals to BLV, okay, because of the Faraday law. So basically, uh, because of that, it will induce a voltage across there. Okay, you induce voltage and you will create a current. Okay, so a current flow to the rotor uh, circuit due to the induced EMF, which in turn produce a force. Okay, so because of the induced voltage, uh, it will create a F is equals to BL V, uh, BLI. Okay. This will create the top of the output. Okay, that is how the basic principle of the induction machine. Okay, so this is the construction you can see here. You have a starter slot. Okay, you play, uh, press the winding here. Put the winding here. Okay, this is starter and this is the rotor part. Okay, rotor slot. I like this machine. Induction machine have uniform air gap. So this is the air gap, it has a uniform air gap. The starter is composed of laminated, high grade laminated sheet. A three phase winding put in a slot in the inner surface of the stator lamination. Okay. The stator also consists of the laminated ferromagnet with the slot cut out outer surface. Okay, for the squirrel cage roto, roto is from a laminated iron core with a slot. Metal bar are uh, molded and slot instead of winding the two ring short circuit at the bar. So remember the two rings. Okay, these two rings. Okay, is short circuit. Okay, is uh, short circuit. Okay, so that is mean by that. And most are uh, a single phase induction uh, motor have a square cage rotor. One or two fan are attached at the shaft of the side okay so you can see here this is a frame blade to cool down the winding okay okay how about the uh, wound rotor okay 
Okay, the wound rotor are usually for large three phase induction motor. Okay, okay, you can see here instead of using uh, just a ring, okay, a skull cage, okay, the ring, you use a winding. Okay, okay, this is much more winding. So it is usually for three phase rotor winding are the same as the stator, and the end of each phase is connected to the slip ring. Three phase are uh, three uh, brushes contact at the three slip ring. Okay, to the three connected resistant three phase for the reduction of the starting current and speed control. Okay, instead of the short circuit, scroll cage is short circuit. Okay, it can be connected to the resistant. The advantage is to reduce the starting current and speed control. Compared to the scroll cage rotor, wire wound motor are expensive and require maintenance of the slip ring and brushes. So it's not common in industry. That's why a school cage is much more popular. Wound rotor induction motor, uh, machine was a standard form of variable speed control before the advent of the motor. Okay. So this one, if you want to have a better control for the induction machine, okay, induction machine, uh, you use a wound rotor. Okay. This is the slip ring for the wound rotor. So this one become wear and tear, and you have to maintain it, okay, very frequently. Okay, this is the construction. Okay, the three phase winding are displaced by each other, 120 degree in space. So you can see here. Okay, this is A, B, C. Okay, remember three phase you have A, B, C. Okay, winding, either star connected or delta connected. Okay. So you can see here A and A, okay. A and A, okay. Means that you have A in goes or goes out, okay. This one in or out. So this one and this one is one connection. So A and A bar, okay. So that is mean by that. So B and B bar and C and C bar. Make sure you know how to draw this, okay. The three phase winding are displaced. Okay, this one already mentioned 120 degree from each other. Okay. And then the current flow in the phase core produces a sinusoidal distributed MMF wave centered on the axis of the coil. Alternating current in each coil produces a pulsing MMF wave. MMF wave are displayed 120 degree space from each other. Okay, this one you have to recall back all the three phase. Okay, just 120 degree. Okay, so as a result, uh, rotating MMF. Okay, uh, maybe I should find an animation after this. Okay, uh, I think this one can explain your uh, the MMF. So this one. Okay, what it means by? Okay, you can see here red, yellow, blue. Uh, red, yellow, uh, the key is doesn't use this one. Okay, so face A, face B, and face C, A, B, C. You can see here when you do sinusoidal, it will change, right? Increase and decrease. Okay, so the resultant, okay, resultant MMF will become something like this. Okay, so you can see it will rotating. Okay, this is why I meant by the rotating magnetic field. Okay, this is another example. If you try to uh, see how the magnetic field move, okay, you can see that the oscillation of the three phase, okay, uh, current will produce the something like this, okay, rotating magnetic field. Okay, you uh, you can also watch the video in YouTube. They have um, animation to uh, to ensure you can see how the magnetic field rotate. So if a stator is energized by the current, the EMF is generated, okay, go to the uh, apply current by the stator winding. Okay, this plug produces a magnetic field and field revolve is uh, in the air gap between the stator and rotor. So the magnetic field induces voltage in the short circuit bar of the rotor. This voltage will drive the current through the bar, okay. So Okay, let me show you. 
So here, okay, basically, so basically this is just a normal metal, doesn't have magnetic, okay, doesn't have magnet, okay. When you have a rotating magnetic field, okay, so it will induce the current here and of course it will rotate it, okay. I think this one already explained before, this is just the uh, repeating information. Okay, this one, uh, okay, this is the equation. Okay, remember, you have a uh, three phase, so 120 and plus 120. Okay, positive sequence. Try to recall back. So you can see here, the arrangement and everything. Okay, at time equals to zero, you can see here, IA is the maximum, IB is the half. Okay, this one is T equals to zero. Okay, you can see here, IA is maximum, IB and IC is negative half. Okay, so it will produce F is equals to, okay, FA is equal to F, FB is equals to half, FC equals to half. Okay, so resultant MMF, okay, F is the resultant MMF. Okay, and then you can see here, the resultant MMF is equals to this one. Okay, at time it is equals to one. Okay, this one. Okay, at this location. So you can see here at IA is equals to zero. IB is equals to square root three divided by two. Okay, IM and IC is Okay, this is IC, this is IB, okay. Okay, if you calculate it, okay, if you have calculated the resultant, okay, you square add it all, okay, for this and this, it will produce F is equal to 3 over 2 F max, okay. So, for all location, okay, all time, F is always, okay, resultant MMF always, equals to 3 over 2 f max okay it is constant amplitude move around the air gap okay so it move around the air gap one revolution per period and is the synchronized speed okay synchronized speed is basically the speed of the this one okay rotation of the mmf okay magnetomotive force so you have to multiply by this one okay this one you have to know so f is equals to 120 f f is the frequency divided by pole okay so pole how many pole are there okay so be careful eh? so this one is in rpm so you want to know the speed is rpm minute that's why it's multiplied by 60 okay rotation per minute okay so be careful with poles and pole pair. Okay. Okay, you can see here this is poles. Okay. So you can see here one, two, three, four, five, six. You have six. For three phase, you have six pole. Okay. So this is six pole. But sometimes it's used pole pair. So pole pair is just one, two, three. A, B, C. So it should be three pole pair or six pole. So make sure you be careful eh? for this uh, formula. It use pole number of pole. Okay, for three phase. Okay, it is six pole. Okay. So reversal phase sequence, current and direction of the rotation. Okay, sequence speed is okay. If you use instead of RPM, okay, sequence speed in RPM you want to use a radian per second. Okay, you can use we or 2 pi f divided by p okay for this case you have to use pole pair okay so be careful poles and poles pair okay so analytic method so the first one is the graphical method you can see here the graph the graphical way to analyze the resultant mmf now the analytical method you can see here f is equals to n 
I. Okay, remember for the formula, magnetomotive force, F is equal to Ni. Okay, magnetic circuit. Okay, F is equal to Ni, but for this case, I is, uh, is AC. Before this, you just use DC. But for this case, it is AC. So, you just replace it with the AC. Okay, resultant MMF wave, you can see here, F is equals to Ni cos theta plus all the wave. Okay. So A is the number of turns, of course, and this one is the current. So after you do this and you have to call the identity, okay, triangular identity. Okay. Okay. So you can see here. Okay, I, I, A, I, B, I, C, you have included. Okay. So, you have to use identity and then this is the output. Okay. So, as a result, when you add it all together, you get 3 over 2 and I cos WT theta. So, that's why the resultant magnetic okay, is 3 over 2 and I. Okay, this is the induced voltage. Okay, no need to uh, understand too much. Okay, just know it is this. Okay. So this one is the induced voltage you can see here. Okay. And the standstill at the standstill operation, you can see that the induced voltage is 4.44 F N1 flux K W. Okay, for running operation, okay. Uh, for this one, I think no need to worry too much, okay. But uh, for this one, you have to look at the slip, okay. So, slip, okay, this one I already mentioned before, okay. So, N is, uh, is equals to uh, 120F divided by number of poles, pair, eh, sorry, number of poles, okay. Slips is basically... What is slip is okay? You have a roto here, okay? Something like this, okay? You have a roto here, okay? So you have a rotating magnetic, uh, rotating magnetic field, okay? At the stator, okay? Okay. So remember N is equals to 120 F divided by P. Okay. So in Malaysia you use 50. Okay. 50 Hertz. And then number of pole pair for three phase you have. Sorry, this is number of pole. Is 6 is equals to 1000 RPM. Okay. So you have the speed of this protecting magnetic field is 100 RPM. And then you have a new, uh, you have a roto here, okay. So for the roto and roto, okay, if you recall here. So this one is called, sorry, for this one is called N synchronized, and for the roto we call just N, okay. The rotation of the roto, okay. But the rotational of the roto doesn't follow the Rotational of the rotating, uh, rotating uh, magnetic field. Okay, for in new induction motor, N is not equals to N S. Okay, this is for roto. This is for stator magnetic field. Okay, for synchronized. Machine. Okay, maybe you call this machine also. Okay. N is equals to NS. Okay, that is the difference for AC machine. AC machine. Okay. The speed is same, but for this case, induction motor, the speed is not the same. Okay. So, this is the theory. Okay, make sure you know. For induction machine, it is not the same. So, what is the difference? We call it slip. 
Okay, slip is n s minus n divided by n. So you can look at here. This is the slip. Okay. So the larger the slip, okay, the slower the. Sorry, this is n s. Okay. So the slower the motor. So uh, slower rotor. Slower. Uh, largest higher slip okay so make sure you know what is slip okay so frequency of uh, induced rotor rotation is you can see here is p divided by 120 ns minus n this one okay this one is just derived from this So F is equals to uh, frequency of the rotation of the motor is basically as F1. Okay, this one is also important. You need to know. Okay, so beside this formula, you need to know. Okay, F2 is equals to as F1. F1 is basically frequency of rotor. Oh, sorry, uh, F1 is frequency of the rotating magnetic field. F2 is the frequency of the rotor. And another thing you need to know, slip is only from 0 to 1. If you get out of this range, it's not correct. Okay. Okay, another thing that you need to know, N2 is also equals to S N1. Or for this case, we use... Uh, n is equals to s n okay n s okay stator rotational speed okay uh, maybe I should write this all okay s is equals to n s minus n divided by n s okay f 2 is equals to S F1. Okay. N is equals to S N S. Okay. Okay. This is another formula to calculate slip. Okay. But in radian second. So no need to worry. Uh, this is all just a theory. Okay. So now we look at example. For final exam. Okay. For final exam, we focus on the uh, example. Okay, so try to understand how to solve the induction machine problem.